any glimpse of hope that the Raptors had of making the playoffs or even making the play-in uh, seemed to take a huge hit today as the team right above them, the Chicago Bulls, holding that final play-in spot in the 10th seed. Uh, they beat the Toronto Raptors. 122-113 today. The Raptors have now lost back-to-back -back games. The record is now 20-32. and And just like the Lakers game, the Raptors are horrendous for three quarters of the game. They they try and find a way to crawl back late, but it's just too little too late at that point. And you lose by nine. But you were down by 20 for the majority of this game, or at least double digits for the majority of this game. Now, coming into the ball game, we hear today that Fred Van Vliet and DeAndre Bembry will not be playing. Obviously, Fred more or less due to his injury. However, him and Bembry, I think Tucker on, um, on the Lakers... Get suspended. And OG and Montrez Harrell gets, get fines. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, hold on a second here. Montrez Harrell, who it looked like he was about ready to kill somebody in the fight. OG, who body slammed Schroeder. They get fines. <laughs> but Fred Bembry, and I'm not sure what Tucker was doing, to be honest with you. He might have been the same thing Fred and Bembry were doing. I don't know. But I know Fred and DeAndre Bembry, they're trying to break up the fight. They, yes, they're not playing and they're not on the floor at the time, but they come on the floor to break up this scuffle, this possible, you know, brawl that's about to happen because Schroeder was hot and Montrezl Harrell was hot. They're trying to break these guys up and those guys get suspended? Oh my God, the NBA is a joke, man. The people actually in the fight just get a fine. Yes, they got kicked out of the game they were playing in, but they had a fine and the guys who literally were trying to not make it a fight get suspended. Bravo NBA, bravo. I think it's just absolutely hilarious watching the NBA work their magic, whether it's officiating, whether it's disciplinary. I, it's just, I don't understand it one bit. And you see Fred Van Vliet's tweet, LOL, I don't blame him. All right, let's get to this ball game in hand though. And it won pretty, that's for damn sure. Raptors in the first quarter trail by six. They allow 33, they score 27. You're only down by six after one quarter play, but you struggle defensively. The story of this season. Uh, in the second quarter, same sort of scenario. You allow 31. You only score 24. You're minus 7 in the quarter. You're minus 13 at halftime. What happens in the third quarter? Same thing. You allow 33. You only score 28. You're minus 5 in the quarter. You're down by 18 going into the fourth. And yeah, the Raptors make this little run in the fourth to make it a 9-point game. And that's the way they lose. But this is the same thing that happened against the Lakers in the last one. The Raptors were down by 20 plus against the Lakers. They bring it down. Oh, they made it a respectable score at the end. Yeah, but you're down by 20 plus for the majority of the game. It doesn't really show how this game actually played out. Same goes for today. Now, there were some great performances in this one. Chris Boucher, absolute monster. Pascal Siakam, heck of a ball game for him. And I'll get to the specifics on Pascal in a little bit. But overall, the team can't play defense. They can't defend the perimeter. They can't rebound the ball. They, look, I got to give the credit to the Bulls for moving the ball extremely well today. The Raptors were minus 16 in assists, but it's just you're not playing good enough. Raptors won that fourth quarter 34-25, but it didn't matter. And this team, like I, I have said it all year long, right? I've said it all year long with the Toronto Raptors squad. You look at two things, with the, or actually three things with this team. And if they win these categories, more or less they win. Defensive, you know, a defensive rebounding, more or less. If you win the offensive boards, you win the rebounding category. That's one. If you shoot the three better than the other team, and you defend the three well, you're going to win 90% of the games if you, do, though, if you do those. But the Raptors have not done that. You know, before we get into the player stats, because I want to break those down quite a bit, um, the Chicago Bulls shot 54% from the field today. It's not good enough. They shot 40% from three. Not good enough. They got 89% from the line, but I mean, it's, you can't really do much about that. But they shot 54% from the field and 40% from three. The Raptors shot 43% from the field and 32% from three. Not good enough. And 82% from the line. Now, as I mentioned, there were some great games in this, in this game today. Chris Boucher played out of his flipping mind. 38 points, 19 rebounds, dropped one dime, shot 14 for 24, was 7 of 8 from the free throw line, was 3 of 7 from 3. He had a steal and a block in the game today. 
easily, well, I would say pretty damn close to his, if not the best rapper game for Chris Boucher uh, as in, in his NBA career. He looked great. He was all over the glass. He was making plays. He was making shots. He was causing havoc on the inside. He looked great today. The, the knock on Chris Boucher is we haven't seen this consistently. You see this for a three-game stretch. Then he's just no, literally nowhere to be found. I love what he did today. He's shown so many great strides this year, including a game like this. And that's the thing. When, when you're talking about a young player, and I understand age-wise, maybe he's not as young, but we're talking about NBA experience-wise, he is pretty young. And you go to that, uh, you know, you go. it's really his first full season in the NBA, right? He had more or less full-time last year, but... This is the first year that he's getting a legit chance. And you're seeing these sparks. And that's usually how it starts for a young player. And you want to see him start to take those next steps, right? You want to see consistent double-doubles. You want to see him uh, make shots consistently, start shooting the three consistently, right? Yeah, overall the season he's been great. But we've seen with Boucher, either he's knocking on every three he takes or he's missing every three he takes. And the great thing about him, the confidence is through the roof. He will continue to shoot every single time. But... Again, it takes some time for Boucher, but a lot of great things coming uh, out of the young uh, young Canadian uh, NBA experience-wise, of course. Malachi, and this, this is where the struggles come in. Malachi Flynn struggles shooting the ball today. Nine points, three boards, eight dimes today. But he shot uh, three of 11. was three of seven from three, which ain't bad. But three of 11 from the field. He had two steals in the ball game. Just, again... Didn't really do a whole lot. Eight dimes for Malachi. You do have to give him credit for that. But Gary Trent Jr. has been the story of the, uh, the Raptors for the last little while. And uh, had his Jays jersey on going into the game today, which I thought was fantastic. But he had a rough one today. Six points, one board, one dime shot, two of 14. Was one of seven from three. Really struggled shooting the basketball today. But hey, that's going to happen sometimes. We've talked about it before. He's younger than guys like Jalen Harris and Malachi Flynn. Literally just drafted this past year. For, so for a guy like Gary Trent Jr., he put a great stretch together. He has an off night. That's fine. Go out there in the next one, put up a good performance. And this one gets forgotten about. All right? OG. He struggled shooting the ball today. 13 points, four boards, six dimes for OG. Shot five of 17. It was two of eight from three. I felt like today he was a lot, he was forcing a lot of shots, especially his threes. Even if there was a guy that was a hand in his face, he was still trying to take the shot, and those are tough. Uh, he had three steals in the ball game, so you do have to give OG a lot of credit for that. You know you're going to get the defensive side of the ball from OG every single night. And Pascal Siakam, who is not getting talked about right now. And you know why? He's playing well. The moment he starts playing bad, everyone wants him traded out of the city. Or I guess off the team because we're not technically playing in Toronto. But he had 27 points, 8 boards, 1 dime shot, 10 of 17 from the field, was 1 of 2 from 3, and had 3 blocks in the game today. So, I mean, he played a pretty good game. And over the last, what, 10 games, 8 of those, he scored 20 plus. So he's been very good for the Toronto Raptors on the offensive side of the ball and, def and defending the rim, 3 blocks in the game for him. The problem today was the ball got stuck too often. They were moving the ball extremely well. The Raptors were minus 16 in assists. Now, that could be a, obviously a huge reason why, you know, Kyle Lowry's not in the lineup. Um, you know, obviously no Fred Van Vliet. So those, you, you lose your guards there. Obviously, Malachi Flynn at eight today, which is nice. But, you know, he, he's, not, he's not Fred. He's not Kyle, right? We all know that. This game for the Toronto Raptors was not pretty. The last two have not been pretty. They've lost back-to-back -back games after winning back-to-back -back games. And as I mentioned earlier, the playoff hopes for this team is just dwindling down and down and down. And everybody on Tank Nation is getting real excited because teams like the Cleveland Cavaliers, I think they beat the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder today. They're behind the Toronto Raptors. I think OKC is as well, so it really didn't matter. But overall, the Raptors, they're showing signs, but they're just not there yet. And all I can, all I can say is their perimeter defense is not good enough. That's been the story of the season, in my opinion. They, they, they can't. They haven't shot consistently. They got 113 today, which is fine. But you give 122. It's just not good enough. All right? So you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. Uh, before the Toronto Raptors take on the Cleveland Cavaliers on Saturday night, 7.30 tip-off there. Kind of squeeze that in there. Hit that like button if you guys enjoyed the video, but not the game. Hit the subscribe button if you guys are not already. Comment down below your thoughts on the video, your thoughts on the game, what you like, what you not like from today's game for the Toronto Raptors.
Uh, Twitter's down below for myself. Follow send me a DM to like great stuff. The Instagram link is down below as well, so follow up there if you have not done so already. And I will talk to you guys Jay's edition as they are in extra innings right now against the Angels. We'll talk to you guys very shortly there. As for the Leafs, they take on the, oh boy almighty, who the heck do they play next? Ottawa, 7 o'clock, Saturday night. Remember that one. And as for the Raptors, their next game is on Saturday night as well. 7.30 tip-off in, uh, in Cleveland as they take on the Cavaliers. Just looking to get back in the win column because Cleveland battling with the Raptors. Tank Nation, I don't know what's going to happen. All right, so we'll have to wait and see, guys. All right, so thank you so much for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, not the game. Uh, we'll talk to you guys then.